Welcome to this week's edition of Power Talk. And today we're speaking to Malimu National DT SACO CEO, Kenneth Odiambo. We're so pleased to have you with us on the program well, once again. Let's talk about the milestone that uh, Malimu National SACO is hitting 50 years. That's, you know, half a decade, golden jubilee. Talk to us about uh, the 50 year journey so far. Right. Yeah, it has been a journey, as you rightfully said. It um, uh, the SACO actually was formed in 1974, to be precise, 24th October 1974, uh, with only 11 members of the TSC Secretariat. Uh, TSC Secretariat here I mean the employees of the Teacher Service Commission, not even teachers per se. But of course, as time went by, it was mainstream for teaching uh, fraternity and uh, quite a lot of uh, post, most, most of post primary. Uh, teachers for that matter. So over the span of that 50 years, we've seen growth in terms of the membership from 11 to last year we hit 130, 250. We've seen our asset base also grow. 130,000? 130,000, okay. yeah. We even desired to be even at more than 150, but of course we, we are working there. So mm. We haven't stopped yet. We've seen our asset also, asset base grow from that 75,000 to last year hit a 67 billion. And all these put together, I mean, is a clear, uh, I mean, indicator that uh, the circle has grown. Uh, of course, we've also had, along the way, we also have had bumpy rides, uh, which of course have given us a little bit of a setback. But we have also managed to, to navigate some of those setbacks and reposition ourselves and probably move to a safer ground. So quite a lot of, uh, I mean, experience as we were journeying through. Um, of course, uh, this is one of the circles that is predominantly for teachers. But again, as time moved by, we have also thought of how do we make the circle grow without yeah. confining ourselves to to the teachers yeah. and and we will talk about that yeah. because i think that's an important milestone right. as you hit 50. <clears throat> yeah. um let's talk about the corporate strategy uh, that yeah. you've recently launched that's 2024 2026 couldn't be coming at a better time when yeah. you're uh, celebrating this golden jubilee so um what are the key points of this corporate strategy and what do you hope to achieve over the yeah. three-year period right looking at the blueprints uh, of the strategy uh, we reimagine our future as a circle and we were looking at what is it that will make this circle i mean uh, be more of a mid tier bank which of course had a billion asset uh, within that time zone i mean time scale uh, but again we also really looked at what are some of those pain points that our members have gone through that would also i mean uh, pitch for us in terms of where do we move this entity and the underlying theme basically was to see a more sustainable circle moving the future and that of course uh, i mean uh, led us to look look at some of the key result areas uh, one among them is that we wanted to look at our customer experience more so the customer journey mapping from end to end whereby you become a member and you actually don't exit so you become a member for life so that was one of our dreams and we asked ourselves what is it that you can do and we said we need to I mean, create more better experiences in terms of what our members get, in terms of the services, in terms of the products. Uh, and of course, here we are talking about financial solution, not just mere products, but financial solutions that have an end-to-end -end life journey of a member. So our, in our new blueprint, that is one of the key result areas. Then we also ask ourselves, um, for us to implement this strategy, we also need to look at the people. The people here, I mean the staff, uh, the management, the board, the members themselves as well. But again, that must be anchored on a culture, the right culture mm -hmm. to, I mean, offshoot the strategy so that it works for us. So that is also a key pillar in terms of how do we engage uh, our, our, our staff more? How do we engage our members more? How do we, I mean, work around all these factors together to be able to make the start circle, I mean, the circle more sustainable and of course accelerate our growth and of course that led us to the third pillar which of course what is our core mandate <coughs> i mean i added when i was starting this uh, um, um, explaining that we have had experiences along the way 
Uh, of course, we've tried our hands in some of the things that some did not work, a few worked here and there. But again, as Malibu National, we don't lament on the decisions we make. When we make decisions that don't work, we look at them and see what is it that we can do. And of course, that has led to some of the decisions that we made recently. So that aspect of strengthening the core, more so what the members actually enjoy in terms of the financial access, uh, in terms of the services, in terms of what is it that we can have for them for the entire life. You know, if they exit service, yeah. then they can still be able to be our members. The fourth matter that we looked at is uh, the issue of um, the governance. As we move along with the new strategy, our governance uh, pitch must also be more resilient. It must be more deliberate in terms of how do we want to make the institution become what you call a member-based institution that members' voices are more louder yeah. than the internal voices. So that is one of the things that we look at. We need to have members more voices outside there. And of course, that will drive our, 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 our strategy moving forward. What, why is, um, and, and, and that brings me to the question of, uh, you know, membership yeah. and the sort of say they have in the running of the SACO. Um, how important is that? And, you know, what's been your experience with that? How important is, uh, you know, the membership itself in terms of ensuring the sustainability of the SACO movement? Right. Uh, in the SACO business model, um, as is without members there's no circle so that is a starting point anyway and having said that then how do we nurture the members that we brought in so that they realize value uh, long-term value in the context of I mean having them go through uh, an experience that they would also tell the story to others and of course at the end of it even uh, those ones who have exited service how do they actually as, uh, their lives pan out and be a good example to those who are still in service. And that we've managed to probably work on very well. Uh, last, last month we had, um, as we call them senior savers forum in Mombasa. Uh, some of them retired almost 15, 20 years ago, still ha going strong and still having quite substantial amount of savings in the circle. And that is a testimony that you get into a circle, you have a lifetime experience. It's not about thinking of exiting when you exit service. Uh -huh. You have to be there. And of course, they're still very happy. And even they're, the, they're, the, they're, they're, they're those members who actually when they tell them that the dividends that you're getting, would you pick it or do you want to capitalize? They say, please take all of it. Uh -huh. Because what we need is a return. And of course, that brings me to the next point. Um, circles by nature are all about members. And uh, one of the key focus uh, that we're seeing and uh, moving into sustainability is that the, how do we uh, consolidate our position? I mean, from where we are in terms of the membership realm that we have, and of course where we draw our membership, how do we diffuse that concentration risk? Looking not only the teachers in fraternity, but also the teachers who are the TC and cast our net wider. And why am I saying so? Um, when we, last year, we had a little bit of uh, delays in terms of remittance. But of course, you see, if you have an employer giving you that big m amount of check every month, then you can get a hit in terms of your cash flow. So how do we expand that scope? Is, is that why you've embarked on, um, you know, recruiting members from outside the teaching fraternity? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and how has that been? Um, how long have you been doing that? And what yes. do you think has been the outcome of it so far? Right. The decision was uh, made last year during our annual delegates meeting, special delegates meeting, where we said, I think we've reached a point whereby uh, we have to disrupt the model that uh, we have been using before. And if you look at the markets, uh, many circles that have disrupted that circle model in the context of only not focusing on uh, employer-based members are throwing, I mean, are, are really growing. They have grown and of course at a very higher rate. And of course, even in terms of looking at other sectors, segments, most of the quasi-banking side, which is FOSA, they are able to generate more revenues other than the back office, which of course is the traditional model. Yeah. So that said then, we looked at it last year and we actually made that decision, of course, with a little bit of caution. We have mm. never gone to what you call the lower end of the market. Mm. But of course, we said those who are employed and probably are on contract, 
which of course will still guarantee us some um, yeah. monthly inflows. And of course, the, in terms of the risk, we can also manage in terms of the so credit. So it's now open to? Absolutely. To absolutely. To any, any other okay. Kenyan who is in okay. employment and of course, who is right. willing to join. Yeah. And we've uh, got in some little, I mean, some interesting uh, prospects coming in, yeah. including some from even banking industry uh -huh. that we thought that they already taken care of. So it is quite an opportunity for us, and we probably see uh, moving into this year, which of course is the is, is where we are going to uh, embed uh, that aspect of, um, of of the membership scope, opening that membership scope. Yeah. Then we, we see a lot of good things coming. All right, what can those new members and also other existing members of of Malimo National uh, look forward to in terms of products that uh, you might be rolling out this year? Right, so uh, we have uh, we looked at now bringing in the new, new segments of membership, the needs must, may be different from the traditional ones that we're having. So we have re looked at our business loans uh, policy and see what is this other new products and services that we have brought in, we can bring in. And of course, that has led us to re looking at what you call the senior savers loan, which of course you must necessarily not be having be on payroll as such, but you can only secure it using an asset. We have also brought in, uh, of course, the issue of the Kenya mortgage refinancing. We have a mortgage product that uh, actually is the cheapest in the market uh, through uh, the collaboration with the Kenya mortgage refinancing, as I said, 9%. I'm not sure whether in any market as we speak, there is a mortgage facility that will run at 9%, looking at where the interest rates are. We are also looking at products that are more geared towards the youth in terms of those who actually new entrants, members who are coming in and of course want to access credit immediately without mm -hmm. actually saving for long. How do we cut for their needs? So it's a myriad of products and services that covers the spectrum of our membership divide. And what we are saying is that we have also looked at our data in terms of the demographics. Mm -hmm. And we realize that most of our members are between 35, 45. What does that show you, or rather what does that indicate? That if you move in that direction, if we are not able to probably cast our nets wider, yeah. then in 10, 20 years down the line, hopefully when I'll be alive, I would not want to see an institution that I managed or led yeah. not there. Yeah. So that's why we have now we looked at our strategy and say, can okay. we see this issue in a, in, a, in, a, in a more futuristic focus. Absolutely, and, and, and the future of that is where my last question is uh, with you today, Kenneth. The sustainability of SACOs, I mean, you know, the movement has been strong in the country. Yeah. You've been there 50 years. Yeah. Um, and, and now you're saying you've even got members who exit the service but continue, Absolutely. Um, you know, saving. Um, so <coughs> how best can Kenyans take advantage of a SACO? You know, is this a movement that you see outlasting yourself, like you say, and the rest of us? How important is this uh, in Kenya's economic space? Uh, I would say that uh, SACOs have been there ever since, but I think uh, a lot of focus has been given to some uh, other financial I mean, institutions, uh, which of course also they have a very critical role that they've played. But of late, what you are seeing is that uh, a number of uh, Kenyans are embracing circles in, in one way or another. Mm. And, and uh, one of the things that is coming out, or rather spanning out very clearly, is that circles offer um, an avenue of fast savings, but of course also access to credit. But not only access to credit, but in terms of the cost of the funds, you're also able to mitigate that. And that's story can be told with what is happening current in the markets. Mm. Many of those who have loans in the banks actually are really on their, 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 their neck is on, 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 on our own. And, and even our own members, some of them have loans in the bank. They're, they're like, can you please come and pick us? We are saying yes, we'll have that conversation, but we also must look at it long term, not short term, yeah. so that when we bring you in, then you don't have just walk out again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's something that uh, uh, in, f in futuristic context, uh, circles will be there. And, and actually the traction, if you look at even the rate of growth uh, from where we started, uh, let's say 10 years ago when the regulation started, 
to current, we are talking over a trillion in terms of asset base. Yeah. When we started, I remember when I was a regulator then, we were talking of less than a half a billion. So you can see that progress and that traction tells you exactly that there is a lot of traction that is being gained. And if we look at that data, looking at data globally and even regionally, you'll see there's a lot of interest that is circles are gaining great unions in other jurisdictions that they are called. And of course, that will tell you that we probably on the right track. But now with a caution, the lower end or the, the youth on the other side, yeah. also, we need to a strategy on how do we mainstream them to circles because right. the older generation, yes, they have embraced the circle, but the youth a little bit sluggish. Okay. But you go to other jurisdictions, you'll find that uh, the youth are embracing more so the Caribbean. So what is this that Caribbeans are doing uh -huh. that us African and Europe are not doing? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Some interesting food for yeah. thought yeah. Uh, there. Thank you so much for making time for us. Congratulations. Thank you. On your Golden Jubilee. That's a, a great milestone uh, coming up in October. Um, and for, you know, talking about the SACO movement, um, its history, its journey, and of yeah. course, uh, where it'll be hopefully in another 50 yeah. <laughs> plus years. Thank you so much for joining us on Power Talk today. That's been Kenneth Othiambo, who's the CEO of the Malimu National DT SACO on the SACO movement that he says is still strong and is still here for decades to come. That's Power Talk.